to some violent content. Parental discretion is advised. That is a good looking picture. <laughs> Here we go. There, dude. Ready? Welcome back, guys. On today's show, this week in sexual abuse charges, too real not to be real, and summertime is here. Now, what can we not do? Also, while we're at it, let's clean house and get rid of these other things as well that piss us off. And it doesn't matter all in the end because the world is ending here soon. They've got a new end date for the world, deadline, whatever you want to call it. All these topics and much, much more will be discussed here on Deacon Live. How are you? How are things? How are things going? Are you doing okay? Did you survive Father's Day weekend? Did you get everything? Did you cook out? You know, there's a meat shortage out there, so did everyone get their steaks? Or did they do, like, those half-ass half steaks? Uh, you know, I like a good uh, London broil. I do. If a London broil is cooked right now, granted, it's a, it's a cheap cut of meat, but it is a uh, if you cut it right and you slice at an angle and you cook it for maybe like three or four minutes on each side, it's still pretty good. It's a good cut of meat. I like a, a New York strip anyways. And I don't like a whole lot of fat mixed in with my my steak, my meat and stuff. Now, I haven't had the Wagyu like we were talking about last week. But, yeah, I like a good London broil if it's done right. My wife does it in the um, the convection oven there, and she does it pretty good. And uh, I like it. It's a big, I'm a big fan of that. So um, what we do is start the show. You ready? Everyone together, hands up, and breathe in, breathe out. Another awesome week, another <laughs> crazy week. Here on the French, in society, and everything that's going on around us at any given time. Now, here on the French, uh, we've been doing the Deacon Live show. For those new listeners out there, we've been doing the Deacon Live show for probably professionally now for at least the last four years. Uh, we've been across many radio streams or um, uh, live streaming podcasts, all that stuff. Uh, you can, it's cliche now saying I'm on all live streams and stuff. So when you hear that and everyone kind of rolls their eyes on the back of their head and they're like, oh yeah, you little podcast, you know, you're doing your things. But here's the thing we have done, you guys out there, we have a, a, a tremendous amount of support from each and one, each and every one of you. Um, and I don't, I don't take that for granted. I'd love, I'd like to cater to every one of you. I'd like to have you all over my house and have dinner. I'd love to cook out for you guys. And, and maybe one time soon, once the whole pandemic lifts and stuff, we'll do a live event and have everyone come out and we'll have t-shirts made and stickers made and magnets made and we'll all get together and, and have a good time. But so one of the things that I I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to get, you know, our voice, our message, your voice, your messages, your products and stuff out to a, a larger audience. So I, I, I reached out to, uh, you know, a couple of radio stations. And one of the radio stations I reached out was is in Central Florida. Now, I know my Central Florida piece, relax, it's okay. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to do... Uh, what we do here on Deacon Live and trying to take it and make it a, a you know pre-recorded show and it would play, you know every you know Monday every Friday whatever down in the in the Central Florida area and to give everyone a little bit more exposure. Um, so I'm I'm talking to a representative down there and you know I'm all about I am all about customer service. I will sit here. You know, I, well, I've talked about this on many podcasts ago where you don't know what that person was doing 15 minutes prior to you talking to them. So if they come up and they're mad or whatever, and you're just like going, hey, you know, and you're, you're in the customer service industry. Hey, how can I help you? What's going on? Instead of being like, you know, chewing, smacking gum and, you know, yep, what can I do? You know, that type of stuff. So I made an attempt. I, I reached out to a couple radio stations in the Central Florida area and contacted one, and they called me back. And I felt like I was bothering that person. I felt like, hey, you know what? This is what I got going on. Well, I, I don't know if we can do that. 
All right, um, I've been in the business for a while. I'm pretty sure we can figure this out. Yeah, well, you know, it's gonna it's gonna cost you. Well, I, I'm not paying for. No, you don't understand. I've got you, all my sponsors, all my listeners. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing you this gift basket. Now, granted, you can do what what it, <laughs> what you want with it, but it, yeah, well, you know, we could do this. We could do, and it was just horrible. I was just, I felt. I felt like I they didn't care. They didn't care. And here's the thing. So here we are. It, it's Wednesday afternoon. I talked to this person yesterday, um, being Tuesday. Actually, I ta started talking to him on Monday. Uh, we're sidestepping everything. I was asking questions and like, oh, you know, I'm busy doing this. I'm busy doing that. Busy? You, this is your job. You're a salesperson. This is what you do. That you're busy? All right, well, maybe I'm talking to the wrong person. I'll go on. I'll, I'll take my business elsewhere. Next day, get a call. We make a phone call and stuff. Contact them. Well, you know, we we really don't specialize. This We don't we don't know how to do that is basically the answer I got. And then popping the gum, and I'm like, all right, well, what do you, what can we do? Well, I'll put something together for you, and, and I'll send it over, you know, a media packet type stuff, and you can look at it and decide what you want to do from there. What I want to do? All right. Well, he didn't even even ask me about what we were doing here. So today, as of today, during this podcast, I still have not gotten anything. And 24 hours, almost 20, almost 30 hours have gone by. And I still haven't received anything from this radio station, from this person that I felt like I was bothering him. I literally felt like I was bothering him. And I'm like going, you know, that, that's, I don't, maybe I'm going in a different direction. Maybe I'm going to take this, this podcast somewhere else. So, I mean, it, it, I, I didn't feel wanted. You want to feel wanted when you have something that you're, you're very pride and you put all your pride and, and your, your, your blood, sweat and tears in and you bring it to someone and they just kind of go, well, you know, and it's that field that you're getting into. They just kind of go, well, you know, whatever. Um, you know, you're a dime a dozen. So, but this dime a dozen might have a complete history behind them of dozens and dozens of other diamond dozens that are supportive. And another another one on the on the same field. I had someone on the old Facebook feed send out, you know, hey, who wants free samples? Well, you know what? I've seen everyone do these. The uh, the pill you've seen the girls on your Facebook feed only one pill a day and two at night and one pill a day and two at night so free samples were coming across the the board here and I said well you know what I I could lose a little weight you know the gyms aren't open here in North Carolina um, they're not going to be open again Roy Cooper again shut everything down here in the the Carolinas and now it's going to force everyone to wear masks do you know how much of North Carolina is rural I mean we are. <laughs> We're not as dense as like Florida. We're not as dense as New York or California or Texas or anything like that. You're going to have me riding on my tractor, running around with a freaking mask on. Now I'll do it anyways because of the dust. But I mean, to go and make the whole entire state. Anyways, I, I told, I said it should always be county by county basis. Oh, you're coming into our county. It's like uh, alcohol sales. Oh, you're coming into, you know, ABC County. I hate to use ABC, not ABC County. I'm trying to make a generic name. You're coming into uh, Widget County. Well, you can't come into Widget County because, well, you can, but you can't buy beer here. You have to go over to Franklin County to buy beer over in Franklin County and then come back over to Widget County. So I, the, I reached out to the person that was given free samples out for the, the vitamin. And you know it's a pyramid skin scheme. You know it's a pyramid scheme. I just wanted to reach out to her and say, hey, you know what? I'll take one of those. I'll try them. I'll, I'll see how it how it feels and how it how it makes me feel and Maybe I can, you know, transpond this to our listeners and stuff. The text message I get back, you know, because you text, you know, I am me for details and stuff. I said, I'll take one. Well, I'll give it to you, but are you willing to spend $99 a month on this product? What's your budget for weight loss stuff? And I go, what? What, what do you mean? What's my budget on weight loss stuff? Well, I, I normally, these samples are expensive. You just said they're free samples. These samples are expensive, and I, I don't just give them out to people who, who aren't um, at the point where they want to spend $100 a month on their own personal uh, regimen as far as 
pill taking or whatever she said. And I go, well, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. I didn't know that you were really diving into this as this ex quote unquote extreme. I said, you know what? Never mind. I'm sorry. And, you know, I was very polite, very polite with both parties, the, the lady in Florida and, and this one uh, giving away the free stuff. Very polite. You know what? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I guess I misinterpreted uh, what's going on. I said, you just, you know, give it to someone that has a little bit more um, disposable income. Okay, well, thank you for your honesty. And I said, all right, fine. And that I just wrote it off. Well, sure enough, they came in the mail the other day. So I have to kind of, you know, tip back my uh, my <laughs> my statement as far as taking a pill. So I got them. They're sitting on the counter there. So she sent them to me. But you never know. When you give someone free samples, you give someone free samples, they might sit on my table for a week. And then I've got a guy who just won the lottery, million-dollar lottery or whatever, comes over and looks at him and goes, hey, what are these? And I'm like, oh, those are some samples of some, hey, I've been looking to get into something like that. Oh, yeah? Well, here's her card and here's the business and stuff. Call the person up. You never know what you're going to get when you when you hand out that little bit of free stuff. You hand out that little bit of stuff. Same thing with the lady in, in Florida on the radio station. Hey, you look, this is what I'm giving you. Is there anything? Well, no, we really don't want. Do you, do you understand how many people I've got sitting on my shoulders that I'm that I'm bringing to you, to your format. To, it's easy. I do the show. I do all the production. I do everything. Here's the show. And all you got to do is plug and play. Well, well, I don't know. We can't figure out. What she's saying is she can't figure out a way to make money on it. She can't figure out a way to make money on it. And it's it's ridiculous. Now, here's the thing. Now, literally two hours before I went on the air, I was talking to this one company. And... Well, for weeks now, and the one company decided to pull the trigger on. I'm like, hey, no problem. Uh, they're like, hey, have you gone on the air yet? I'm like, no, I got all your stuff. And hey, we're ready to go. Uh, we'll we'll send the check to you. Blah blah blah. Here's how you do it, or here's here's all the information. Here's all the you know the the PR docs and all that stuff. I said, well, that's you know what, that's great, perfect. Let me help you. Let's do it. Uh, I didn't say, hey, we can't do it. We're not going to do it. Um, you know, the check quote unquote, hasn't cleared, but I've been talking to this person for a while. I have trusted them. I believe what they're doing. And so this is going to be uh, their first read. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, they, it's a brand new app that's coming out. It's called Card Keeper, K-A-R-D Keeper, just like Trapper Keeper, Keeper Keeper. And in a nutshell, Card Keeper allows you to, as you can see, it's a live read. Card Keeper allows you to allows you to very easily save digital copies of any card you receive and store it on CardKeeper Cloud based on filing based on a filing cabinet. Now what this is essentially is on my refrigerator I've got birthday cards, I've got um, happy birthday cards, happy anniversary cards, happy all that stuff cards. And how long do you leave them on the refrigerator? How long do they stay up there? And then you kind of feel bad throwing them away, especially if they're from someone that, that passed away recently. Like they gave you a happy birthday card and then all of a sudden grandmother passed away. And you're like, oh, I wish I had the card because I had her inscription on it. Let's say it's a love letter or any letter that you feel bad about throwing away and you don't really want to clutter and keep up the, keep, keep up with it. Store it with a click of a button on Card Keeper, that's Card Keeper with a K. Or even those save the dates where all your friends getting getting married and stuff and they're falling off the refrigerator doors. Save them on Card Keeper. When an event comes around, you can quickly pull up an invite, check the details, like attire, address, and what time it starts again. As soon as you open up the app, you choose from two options, store the new card or search for save card. Storing new cards has been easily Storing new cards is easy as snapping a picture of them and selecting the category for which the card will be saved in. Searching for saved cards is easy by typing the sender's name or scrolling through recent cards or even by category. You can find Card Keeper with a K wherever you download apps. It's free with ads or to remove the ad or to remove the ads by inviting 10 friends. You have unlimited storage on the card cloud. You practically have unlimited card cloud storage by using the Card Keeper app. And that's it. I mean, this is a great guy, great company um, that's it, it started a new app. So if you're interested in them, check them out. Uh, stick around. We'll get into the more of the show here. Uh, we got a great show for you, so stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. It was a horrible read, by the way. Sorry. Uplift it's first time. Uplift and inspire me, too. 
is an original clothing design, dedicated to promoting love, rather than hate. Inspiration to lift you up, find the original clothing line, go to www.profit. Radio.com. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You can give us a call anytime at 407-448-8800. We are live from the Queen City studio located just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, a beautiful little town we like to call Marshville. You just heard Los Music and P.A.T. Pat, Louisiana's finest, and they got a new song out called Hip Hop's My, Fr- My Friend Hip Hop. They got a new album out and a new song out, new single out. Called My Friend Hip Hop. Their new album just dropped the past, uh, was it the 19th? June 19th is what it says. Yep, June 19th. New album just dropped called Inside the People. 36 minutes of beautiful, awesome music you can relate to. Now, I like that song, My Friend Hip Hop, because it's got a bunch of uh, the lyrics. They've worked in like old school uh, hip hop album titles into the actual song and you can find them uh they're playing right now on profit radio uh, uh every so often so make sure you check them out and that's uh los music and pat pat louisiana's finest and their new song called my friend hip-hop i like them now summertime's coming around and everyone wants to get outside, everyone wants to get out of the house, everyone's been locked up. Now, hopefully some people, some families take the whole entire summer off to get their kids out and they take big long vacations, they go out and they do all the stuff to get, you know, two weeks off. I remember as a kid growing up, uh, we used to take November off for whatever reason. Two weeks uh, prior to Thanksgiving, we'd take November off and go to the mountains or something, which is weird. I guess that's just the way my mom's vacation time worked. But yeah, now summertime's here, and uh, there's a lot of things out there that we like to do. You know, you can get outside, you can be totally um, away from everybody, you can camp and stuff. One thing that I... (laughs) Excuse me, one sec. One thing that I used to do, and I learned as a a child, is um, with my parents and stuff. Now, my parents, I don't want to say they're old school and stuff, but we do have a, a strong German background on my mom's side. And on my dad's side, we're uh, Native American. Uh, we're part Cherokee. Uh, I've got blood relatives and stuff that are in Cherokee. And my mom uh, is German. We're, they came in through New York, you know, Ellis Island and all that stuff. And so I've got a, a strong background. <laughs> How about, what is that? I don't even know. If there's a joke there somewhere. But we used to play a game called Euchre. Now, if you don't know what Euchre is, it's... um. It's kind of like, what is it, spades? I think spades is the closest thing you can get to euchre, where you have power cards and and taking uh, what they call tricks or, um, you know, you play on teams, you know, partners across the the table and stuff. Euchre, so you sit there and you play with all, I think it's all, I haven't played in a while, I think it's all all the um, nine through ace, but the jacks are the high cards is the way you play euchre. You have right and left bower. So, for example, I'm not going to get into the actual details of the game. So, if the whole entire, the main suit is hearts. So, the jack of hearts is the, the number one card. Then the ace of hearts is the number two card. And then king and then queen. But, oh shit, I, I fucked it up already. Jack is the number one card. The jack of hearts is the number one card. The jack of diamonds is the number two card. Then ace hearts and all the way down. So, that's right and left bower. Anyway, so that, that's euchre. But, I don't know, do you guys... We're getting into our our families are getting so diluted now that I don't know if, if we follow the the practices, the traditions of our grandfathers and our fathers' fathers and all that stuff. I was watching um there's a episode on uh, or a, a series on Netflix called F is for Family. And it's kind of loosely based on Bill Burr. It's a great cartoon. It's a great, it's a great animated show. If you like Bill Burr and his his Bill Burr and his uh, comedic take on family and stuff, it's his voice, essentially the voice of his dad talking about the stupid shit and stuff as kids growing up. It's re- <laughs> the third season just came out. It's really really good. Him yelling and screaming. No one can scream like Bill Burr because you get it. <laughs> He's Irish and. And something else. But anyways, it's funny. So we used to play old school card games. And, you know, everyone's done Uno. Everyone's done all the other games. I don't don't know. Pinochle. I never played Pinochle. I I always got confused. My wife loves to play gin, gin rummy. 
Uh, but these are like, are you playing card games with your kids? Do you know how to play card games? Because I know I see a lot of single, I hate to say it, I hate to, I see a lot of single parents out there, single mothers, single fathers, and that's why I say our families are getting diluted. You don't see the mother and father sitting over the table showing their children, hey, this is what our parents used to do. This is what our folks used to do. You spend most of the day deciding who's going to take what kid on what day to what park on what weekend. And that's sad. That's just the way things are right now. And then they'll say, you know, well, Deacon, what do you know? You know, you have, you came from a, you know, a full, fully functioning family. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I've got a mother and I got a father that are still married to this day. As far as fully functioning, eh, there's, you know, everyone's got their quirks and works and all that stuff. Now, quirks and works, one thing that kids look for every summer and some adults do as well, especially in Florida, not necessarily up in, uh, in the uh, the tundra states, but in Florida this year, oh my God, I know, brace yourself. This year, one of Florida's, if not Florida, one of the southern favorites are going away this year because of the coronavirus. So, if you're familiar with 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven this year has canceled their annual free Slurpee Day. Yep, that's right. The convenience store chain will donate those in need instead of giving out free slurpees for its birthday this year. The coronavirus pandemic has claimed another beloved summer tradition for 2020. The Dallas-based convenience store chain 7-Eleven announces today that it will not be holding their annual free slurpee day held on July 11th, otherwise known as 7-Eleven Day. The largest convenience store chain made the announcement in a press release earlier today citing that uncertainties associated with the coronavirus, the company which holds an annual celebration of its birthday by handing out free frozen drinks on July 11th, which are, they're like four or five ounces, but I'll tell you what, as a kid growing up, you could tell all the, the kids in the neighborhood that got the free Slurpee because they've got the big Kool-Aid mustache on their face. Uh, well, they will instead donate 1 million birthday meals to Feeding America. Hey, you know what? That's a pretty good trade-off. Traditionally, July 11th is the busiest day of the year for the company, and this year's special circumstances call for a different approach. This is not bad news, though. Uh, those looking for a free Slurpee can still get one as long as they are members of the free 7 Reward Loyalty Program. <laughs> Click here to find more. Those lucky, fo lucky folks will receive a coupon for the free Slurpee you can use once during the month of July. And, of course, the delicious frozen concoction are always for sale at the 7-Eleven store. So, yep, nope, nothing this year. No 7-Eleven free Slurpee. But if you're part of the what they call the 7 Rewards, that's the number 7 Rewards loyalty program, you will get a coupon. I don't know if it's too late to sign up for that, but I guess, you know, here we are the last week of June. Might as well sign up for it because then they'll send you a free Slurpee card for your free Slurpee. Now, something else that's going away. I didn't know this was a thing, uh, but I guess it was. In, switch screens here so you can see what I'm talking about. One big summer tradition is always to have like big summer parties, big block parties and stuff, especially up north. They're more of a tighter community. Uh, you know, you could tell by uh, in some places in New York, your accent based on what street you came from, that type deal. And the city of Philadelphia is asking the people to refrain from swimming in dumpsters after a block party rented a trash bin and turned it into a makeshift swimming pool over the weekend. So what they're doing is they're, they're renting these big, you know, open top containers, the big metal ones. I'd be like, Ooh, who knows what was in there? Well, hold on, the story gets better. Um, Justin Myers, Justin with a Y, where does the Y go? Where the I would go, who's part of a group that organizes a block party every year, says he decided to turn a dumpster into a pool while brainstorming party ideas. I'm sure they did. <laughs> what should we do? Every year we try to better ourselves, is what he told the uh, USA Today. Last year, uh, I turned my pickup truck into a pool. This year, we we're like, pickup truck was cool, but let, let's do something bigger. They couldn't get enough people into it. Meyer says he had to power wash. 
You ready? It's a lot of work to do these big parties, I guess, in Philly. And uh, maybe the city should take it upon themselves to have one of those rolling pools or something on a flatbed. So here you go. Meyer says he pressure washed, pressure washed the trash bin and then put plywood and pool noodles on the bottom and then covered the whole thing up with tarp so I guess the water wouldn't leak out. Everybody was there, thought it was the best idea ever. Well, yeah, duh. That would be awesome. But I don't know about swimming in a mm, dumpster. I guess that you have to make sure the tarps are clean that, that make the liner and stuff. Uh, I can't believe we haven't done this before, Meyer said. Well, you know, you got to think big. Unfortunately, the city was not amused. The city says we will not issue any more permits for block party dumpster pools. Karen Gus, G-U-S, S, the community's director, <laughs> the communication director, for the Department of Licensing and Inspections for Philadelphia. So if you guys want to write a bad nasty gram, look for Karen with a K, Karen Gus, and the Department of License and Inspections, and say, we want our dumpster tub. We're not screwing around, Philly, is what she is what she said, added in this article here. According to the city, fire hydrants cannot be used to fill pools for a slew of safety reasons, including long long strong water pressure from a hydrant could possibly uh, damage someone and take water away from another fire that happened to be in the area. Meyer says they apologize to the city who's the guy who uh, created the dumpster thing. Uh, for one sure we can't wait to see our, what our block pottery does next year. So yeah, summertime's uh, coming and if you don't know <laughs> if you need a swimming pool, I guess you could rent one of these big open 30-yard 30, 30 containers without the top on it and make your own little dumpster thing. Now, I've seen it at Walmart. They've um, they've actually started selling like a pool liner for your for your truck bed. And it's like it's inflatable, like it's got an inflatable uh, lip on it and stuff. That's kind of cool. I don't know about sitting in the back of a truck, though. I mean, my, the bed of my truck has got a, a spray-in bed liner. But it just it doesn't feel comfortable. I guess you would have that's I guess that's why they put the pool noodles and stuff in there. All right, we come back. Um, we're going to talk about what happened in NASCAR uh, briefly. Uh, I, I promised myself during this episode I wasn't going to talk about anything political or religious. I, I don't talk about political or religious things at all. But I mean, when you start getting into what's going out there outside of the 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 norm. Um, it all ends up in racism, and I don't want to talk about all that stuff, so we're just going to talk about fun stuff um, outside of the world ending here in a couple days. So, uh, But I'm going to get the full story. Uh, you'll hear it here first, right here on Deacon Live, of what happened with Bubba Wallace and uh, his, uh, his uh, incident that happened in NASCAR. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You just heard the new release from the Richmond band with influences as of Alter Bridge, Alice in Chains, Heart, Keith Urban, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, 30 Seconds to Mars and stuff. The Richmond band tries to capture its own sound by using these influences as well. On Friday, this Friday coming up, June 26th, their new song, Remington, will be released on iHeart, Amazon, Spotify, and all digital platforms. And also being played here on Profit Radio. So make sure you check them out. That's the Richmond Band. And you can find a link on them on the P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio, Profit Radio website. Uh, they're from the UK and you can find all their booking information as well. Um, just check my email. Speaking of booking information, just check my emails. Uh, looking for the, uh, the email from uh, the girl. Uh, from the Florida radio station to figure out what they're going to do. If they want to have us down there, if they want to have Deacon Live broadcast strictly on a terrestrial radio station in Florida, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm, I know they're going to listen to this podcast. That's the thing, because this will be the latest podcast. So I'm probably either shooting myself in the foot or just showing them that, you know what, take it or leave it. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Let's try something new. You guys need something new, so let's do it. Outside of that, then there you go. Everyone in Florida is like going, what radio station is he talking about? Well, it's 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 one of the big ones. There's a lot of famous names on there. Anyway, so I'm, I'll, I'll, I digress. I digress because people overseas do not care about what goes on in Florida. Or do they? I mean, there's a reason why they call some things the Florida man in newspaper articles. But I digress. Uh, speaking of North Carolina man, 
Uh, you ever heard of Bubba Wallace? Hold on. <laughs> Make sure that I have his name right. You ever heard of Bubba Wallace? He, uh, I guess he was targeted for a hate crime, supposedly. Now, if you don't know the whole story, um, I'm going to sum it up real briefly, and then I'm going to let him describe it. He's on CNN describing it in his own words. Let's find out who this is. Hello, you're on the air. Esta es una llamada muy importante para asistirlo con la nueva inscripción o renovación de su seguro. Oprima el 1 ahora para ser transferido a un especialista u oprima el 2 ahora para ser eliminado. Four. That's all I got. <laughs> so, for all my Spanish people out there, all my Spanish friends, uh, I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed that. So, Bubba Wallace, he was uh, in the middle of this whole um, noose in the garage type thing. I really didn't pay any attention to it. I don't follow NASCAR. Uh, I, I try to steer away from like these type stories after we've been burnt so many times as far as like the Jesse Smollett story um, and all these different other stories that relate to, you know, segregation, hate and racism and separ separation, separation, separation. People just dividing each other, I guess, is what I should say on that. I just kind of, I try to stay away from them because it, uh, that's all it does. It does exactly what it's designed to do, and I, I don't like that. I don't like that in people. So anyways, this is an actual interview that CNN had with Bubba Wallace. I want you guys to hear it first so you can hear the whole story right out of, quote-unquote, the horse's mouth. So here we go. After tonight, I'll probably turn my phone off. Uh, and make sure you can see this video in real time as we're talking about it here on the podcast. Uh, you can go to Profit Radio and click on the Deacon Live section. Every podcast that you hear also has a video in real time that you can see when we talk about articles and stuff. So you can see the actual videos and get a, a, a visual image of what we're talking about here. So this is the uh, actual conversation from Concord, North Carolina, probably about an hour and a half up the road from us here in Marshville. And this is uh, Bubba Wallace. Uh, unfortunately, until about 7.30 in the morning where the interviews start back up again and we get to it all over. But, Don, to, to hear my side of the story, and I don't mean to steal your spotlight of the show, but my Go side needs it. to be heard. Um, I don't know what time it was, about 5.30, 6 o'clock on Sunday evening after the race has been called, garages are closed. Crews, my crew is on a plane back Badly to about North Carolina. what happened. Uh, uh, no, I know. And I, uh, we so there you go. I mean, that, I mean that's words. exactly what happened as far as um, – the whole reason behind the whole uh, they found a noose and the thing and but here's the thing if the president of nascar came up to him and said hey they found a noose in the in the uh in your garage wouldn't you go if i was the president hey before i tell this black man um that there's a noose in his garage can i see this noose can i look at this noose and then walk in there and i said this on the facebook feed i said any man i don't care who you are uh, race, religion, creed, business, occupation, or whatever, any adult that has worked in a warehouse facility type atmosphere, whether it be Amazon, whether it be, you know, the, the shit yard and you're, you're shoveling shit all day. If you've got a roll up door, that's not automatic. A lot of people don't have the automatic doors and you don't have the chains or stuff on it. You just have the, the piece of rope. Everyone knows you tie that fucking thing in a goddamn knot. And so you can you have a handle to pull on because those roll up doors because they've probably been there for years. There's a spring up top that's tightly wound, and over the years that thing rusts. And you got a freaking, I've got a um, a guy I used to work with. He was like 160 pounds. He would hold on to the rope, pick his feet up off the ground just to get enough momentum to get the door to shut. These big 12 foot tall roll up doors. So if I was a president. Maybe I would have said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Let's show me what you're talking about. And he would have gone, oh, that's the pull rope from that. It's not like the the, the classic, um, the 13, what's the, the noose with the 13 loops, the, the bandings and stuff on it. That's why kind of they say the 13 bad lucky number and all that stuff. Um, the hangman's noose has the 13 wraps and stuff on it. It would have been nowhere. It's a slipknot. Slipknot. Well, guess what, Ban? Guess what? That band's gone. See you later, Slipknot, because uh, you're racist, because you've got a, a name that, <laughs> that's got, uh, where do we start, where do we stop, and what's going on from here? All right, when we come back, we'll get into uh, a little bit more of the show. That was, the, that was the only thing I want to touch on. It was just so 
friggin' stupid. I say stupid. I'm not belittling the, the whole conversation. But what I'm saying is there should have been more steps taken than just saying, hey, you know, the president run right up to the guy and go, guess what I found? <laughs> We're going to make news. We're going to make more buzz in NASCAR type thing. And that's the opinion I took away from that. And I hate that that lip smacking, the, the teeth sucking uh, when you're talking. I try to I try to eliminate that as much as possible when I'm when I'm doing the broadcast here. All right, when we come back, sexual abuse charges. I know we haven't had a good one in a while, but these are a little bit too real when they happen. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Uplift and inspire me too is an original clothing design. Dedicated to promoting love rather than hate. Inspiration to lift you up. Find their original clothing line. Go to www.profitradio.com. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Uh, make sure you uh, check out the Asylum podcast. Uh, I, I know they've got a bunch to talk about the whole um, Bubba Wallace thing over in NASCAR. Uh, two guys, two brothers named Marv and Meyer Lansky, uh, giving their opinions about sports politics and stuff related all in between there make sure you check out the asylum podcast over there on itunes and uh, tell them uh, uh deacon live sent you and you can find their uh their twitter accounts uh the deacon live section over there on profitradio.com check them out they're they're great they're, they get really in in depth as far as sports uh, sports <laughs> sports and politics and uh, i'm sure they got something to say about the whole nascar thing as well and uh, you also heard mikey hampton and the meows uh, they got a new song out called uh, Heal My Heart, and you heard them coming back from break. That's Mikey Hampton and the Meows. Check them out as well. Um, they've got a new album out called OK, I'm Ready to Rock Now. Uh, most of their influences are like Green Day, Oasis, and Nirvana, and they've got a great sound. Uh, he's straight from New York, the New York area, uh, so U.S. born. There you go. <laughs> so one thing that's that's happening right now, and it's been a while because everyone's been involved in the whole pandemic and everything. And I hate to say that um, here we are trying to get out of you know everything that's pandemic, and then all of a sudden we had the uh, George Floyd thing. And I you know I prayed that something else would happen. I guess nothing ever good happens, anyways. I say anyways, but just to take our minds off of certain things. Now this story, I don't know if it slipped under the radar. Or it's it's going through the cracks and stuff. Now, these two guys, there's two... We haven't had a good... I don't want to say a good sexual abuse story or a sexual assault story because that sounds very horrible. That sounds bad. Well, it is bad. But we haven't really had any um, celebrity gossip because everyone's been trapped in their houses. They've been trapped. Uh, they're not doing anything. They're not producing any movies. They're not producing any TVs or or anything really because everyone's you know the production crews are down and no one's doing anything like that so somewhere somehow some way uh, these two stories have come out and I don't one I don't know how to accept it and the other one I was like well, well that's more of a film or art imitating life the first one is this gentleman right here if you're any oh well, hold on let me switch screens here if you're any age under the age, let's see, who would this pertain to? You might know him as the Hedgehog. You might know him as, well, let's say, you might know him as the Hedgehog. And he gets this name because he is a weird, creepy-looking dude. He was in porn for many years. That's right, I'm talking about the one, the only, Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy has been charged with three rapes and one sexual assault, dating all the way back to 2014. So... You guys are like going, or the, the youngins out there are going, who's Ron Jeremy? Who's Ron Jeremy? Well, back in the 60s and, well, not 60s, 70s, 80s, and maybe late 90s, he was the shit. He was the guy who was boning all the girls in the porn star business. And I, I always thought he was weird. He was disgusting looking. He was hairy man, and his penis kind of looked like it was used as a hot poker in a fire. But anyway... <laughs> That's neither. Not that I'm sitting there examining his penis, but I mean, really, it looks like it caught it on fire somehow. But so here's here's what's going on with Ron Jeremy. Oh my God, here we go. And if you can watch us, the live video, 
You can watch us on the live video if you go to the Deacon Live section of uh, Profit Radio. Every podcast has a live video in sequence, so you can watch what we're talking about live uh, in use. And more breaking news this hour. Adult film star Ron Jeremy has been charged with sexually assaulting four women. L.A. County District Attorney Jackie Lacey just announced the charges. The now 67-year-old, whose legal name is Ron Jeremy Hyatt, is charged with forcibly raping three women and sexually assaulting another. The DA's office says the incidents happened from 2014 to 2019. This video is from an interview back in 2013. Arraignment is scheduled for this afternoon. If convicted, he faces a maximum sentence of 90 years to life in state prison. Hello, I'm so hold on a sec. So Ron Jeremy is three rapes and one sexual assault. Now, for those of you who don't know, the let me get the full story here. I think the hold on. Please, I don't want to hear anything. So I think the women that he sexually assaulted and raped were they were all of age. So let's put it that way. let's start there. One lady, one young lady was the age of 24. Uh, the other two were, or the other three were 37, 42, and 45. Now, the 37, 42, and 45 women should know who Ron Jeremy is. I mean, Ron Jeremy literally is like, I don't want to say he's the, he's the hedgehog of porn. You know, it's kind of funny. I, you know, if John Holmes was still around, who's John Holmes? He's my little brother. But I mean, he's, he's the... Outside of the female adult stars, he's one of the guys in porn that made it across um, the the media. So the girls that were with him knew what I don't want to say knew. You know, it's kind of the issue of uh, you know she was uh, wearing it, so she was asking for it. No, he's Ron Jeremy. His whole entire life is now he's got to have some kind of. Um, ha some kind of uh, he has to retain himself. He has to you know keep control of what he is but i mean when you're when you're ron jeremy do you where am i going there's a certain era or aura era or aura of ron jeremy and you don't want to have you know um if you're gonna have sex with him <laughs> you're just gonna bone him you're just gonna bone him now is it one of those things where uh, they feel bad afterwards. You know, do they regret it? Oh, you you had sex with the hedgehog? Oh, no, not really. Oh, he, he quote-unquote raped me. We don't know what the allegations are. But that industry, you kind of go, Maybe I don't know what the occupations of the other th four girls were. Now, I've worked in strip clubs before, and I have seen some girls do things, lights are off, Christmas parties, Halloween parties, that type of stuff. I've seen things happen because there's a certain, I don't want to say expectations because that's not true, but there's a certain looseness as far as being naked and being aroused in large group settings when your whole entire industry is based on sex. There, I said it. That, that sounds a little bit better for me and I can swallow that and take it home. Now, something that I can't swallow and take home is this guy right here. This guy from this movie um, has uh, is also being accused of sexual assault. Actually, this Netflix series right here. It's hard to have a fresh start when the past is on your mind. Candace. I think we have some unfinished business to talk about. It's a new me. You were here before. I couldn't look you in the eye. Will Bettelheim. Your credit came back sparkling, Will. But I looked you up. You're not on the socials. So on that season three, this is the that's the trailer for the 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 uh, series on uh, Netflix called You. And you involves like this stalker guy, and, you know, he's got a crush on a girlfriend and stuff. Now, in season three, he comes across, uh, I don't want to say it's his nemesis, but kind of like this person that he kind of worries about. And they think he's a pedophile on the, on the show on season three. So, Chris, I can't pronounce this. Hold on. <laughs> got to do the old. Delia. So, the main star of... The Netflix series called You, Penn Bagley, is speaking out about the sexual misconduct allegations against 
co-star Chris Delia, urging that the changes need to be made in order to stop similar behavior. Multiple multiple women have come forward on Twitter last week with allegations that Delia, a 40-year-old stand-up comedian and actor who recently starred in Netflix, you groom them for their teen years and requested sexual photos via the internet. Delia has not been criminally or civilly charged. Now, he just had a couple episodes on, uh, just had a whole bunch of uh, stuff come out on Netflix, stand-up uh, comedy specials, and now he's uh, he's being charged for essentially in the same role that he was doing on the U, which is hard to make this whole thing a story, um, to discuss the story, you on Netflix played the same thing. He was like this, uh, trying to get teenage girls, taking photos and stuff. And then in real life, life imitates art. And he actually, uh, gets, gets caught. And that's Chris Delia stand up comedian. He's, uh, uh, he, you know, he's, he's looking at some, uh, some time if they, if they convict him now, someone who's been out of the limelight and has for some time now, Mike Rowe. You remember Mike Rowe? Dirty Jobs? Oh, God. <laughs> Dirty Jobs, sexual assault. What am I doing here? Dirty Jobs is back on the road and going to return to the Discovery Channel. Mike Rowe, who has been hosting this trailblazing series since 2003 all the way to 2012, in which he took a, a deep, awfully dive into everyday occupations, has reunited with his old crew, Dirty Jobs Road Trip. <laughs> road, because last name which premieres on July 7th on nine, at 9 p.m. on Discovery. Now, here's the best part about the whole Dirty Jobs quote-unquote road trip. Uh, for the past, in a four-part series, Micro and the company, Micro and company drove an RV reminiscing about the series, uh, revisiting uh, classic episodes, reconnecting with memorable Dirty Jobs participants. But here's the twist. The series was filmed during the pandemic. We shot two weeks ago, which is, Tricky, Micro 58. He's a he's a good looking gentleman, by the way, and 58 years old, still looking good. Not that you know, I go that way. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, I've done a lot of Zoom TV over the last four months, but Dirty Jobs can't be a Zoom show. The plan was to go out into the field and pick up where we left off, but the COVID-19 virus made it impossible. So we rented an RV, we got all tested, and we went out on the road into the world, he says. We met a tiny we met in a tiny town of Templeton, California, which is about 25 miles inside of um, the central coast there. I rented an Airbnb, checked in for a week for about, you know, and went off on our different adventures, which is code for misadventures. I did most of the behind-the-scenes shooting, Micro says. Uh, Micro was joined with Basky, or Barsky, the cameraman, of course, and then uh, Douglas Gover and the sound guy as well, uh, who worked on all the original series. Over the 25 years, over the years, we probably did about 25 of these retrospective, and I'll pick the theme, and blah, 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 dirty jobs, blah, 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 dirty jobs. Rose says the fans will see him looking back at old, back at old footage, checking in with the people featured on past Dirty Job episodes, and some he hasn't seen in the last ten years. So if you're a big fan of the old Dirty Dirty Jobs back in the day, um, they went out on the road during the actual pandemic and stuff, connected with some people. They were in the uh, an RV. Looks like they're renting an RV and driving around. And uh, it's interesting to see a lot of these people where they've been for the last uh, 10 years and, and what they're doing and what they're still doing and how they're do dealing with this whole pandemic and stuff. You know, since we're cleaning house and, and doing all the stuff uh, since the pandemic and, and stores are closing and stuff and the, the, the riots and I don't know, can we throw one more thing on there? Yes, we can. This is coming out here uh, and I don't know if it's going to make uh, headlines, but I saw it and I said for real and... I can't believe this is actually happening, but this kind of makes sense. They're going to reword a couple uh, holidays that we celebrate. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. With all the scare and everything with the COVID-19 virus, you need one location where you can trust their information. That information can be found on the ncov2019.tv, a dashboard, a live dashboard that provides the most recent up-to-date up coronavirus from all around the world. It also helps you with vaccines, companies that are working on vaccines, videos, maps, statistics, and everything that has to deal with the coronavirus here in 2020. 
Go to ncov2019.tv, go to the real live dashboard, and see all the news, breaking, elements, medical, and firsthand information about what's happening with the COVID-19 virus. Welcome back to Deacon Live. This section is brought to you by Uplip. Welcome back to Deacon Live. This section is brought to you by Uplift and Inspire Me Too, a dedicated pr clothing line promoting to. Welcome back to Deacon Live. This segment is brought to you by Uplift and Inspire Me Too, a clothing line dedicated to promoting love rather than hate. Uplift and Inspire Me Too has new clothing line, new d designs, new logos available now in their shop. Stop the hate. And show some love. T-shirts are now available. Go to Profit Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio. Click on their logo of Uplift, Uplift and Inspire Me Too for all your inspirational needs. Now, promoting love and not hate is one thing. Of course, we, we tried. Not, not that I'm all lovey-dovey and all hippie and freaking hugging trees and stuff. I mean, there's a, there's a certain point. But I mean... I try to, uh, I try to create or create touch or touch. I can't, I can't touch and I can't create. I try to treat a. Hmm. I try to let you guys know that I understand a lot of you. I understand everything that's going on out there, um, and I'm on your side. I'm on everyone's side. Uh, I say everyone's side. You know, you can't be in the middle. You can't, you know, can't lean this way and this. Can't. Uh, hey, man, I just want to get along. I just want to be, you know. Like uh, Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? Can't we all just be each other's friends? Um, the golden rule. I keep bringing that up over and over again because that's essentially the, the way I live my life. I've always lived my life like that. Now, one thing that's that's going to change, and I don't know if Hallmark's going to be excited about it. <laughs> but there are a group of people right now that are petitioning to... Oops. You know, we've just come over a big holiday, and that's Father's Day. Now, one thing that we don't think about how that affects other people. Now, everyone says, you know, single mothers try to be the fathers and mothers year-round. We should have our own special day. Um, what about fathers that have lost mothers? You know, they're the fathers year-round. There's a group of people right now that just want to end Father's Day altogether. And the opinion, this is from the Los Angeles Times, Opinion, a good reason to end Father's Day altogether is a gender holiday. Although I'm a dad, I think it's time to put an end to Father's Day. When I was a kid, I was always saw myself throwing a Frisbee with my future children. When I came out in 1992, don't mark that. Please don't mark that and send it to me. <laughs> I'm reading an article. Gay parenting was still in the closet. My fathering prospects seemed to dim until I met Peter. Honestly, couldn't be John or Jack. I guess it wouldn't matter. Uh, his easygoing style hinted at Papa potential, too. Papa. Nine years later, we drudged through the mounds of paperwork and home studies and so we could adopt. Our newborn immediately came to us and, and was the center of our lives. The two middle-aged white guys and the darkest-skinned daughter we could ever find. Oh, Jesus, that's hard. It's like Mitch and Cam and Lily from Modern Family. God, this article's full of bad stuff. I say bad stuff, just inappropriate saying stuff. Once my little girl started nursery, she presented she presented a uh, gift from us, of course, with pumpkins and turkeys and lookalikes and pipe cleaners and hearts and all the stuff. And then Mother's Day rolled around and I panicked. My child has many different mothers, a godmother, two god grandmothers, a birth mother, but no mom that she, but she has two dads. I know we weren't alone in this conundrum. Conundrum. Recently, census indicates that only 19% of homes are composed of traditional moms and dads. That's what I was talking about earlier. And kids. More than 11 million residents with kids are headed by a single person or same-sex couple. These families, too, have not been fumbling, have been fumbling through one of the parents' holidays. So, essentially what they're saying is, I have a son... And I had to remember a new date and send two remembrances to flowers or anyways, grappling for my gayness. So what they're saying is now that we've allowed um, gay people to marry, which is fine. 
We've allowed gay people, uh, gay people, gay couples to adopt, which is fine. Now they're saying let's get rid of all this stuff. And I think there was a there was an article or something I read a long time ago about uh, Gunkle, the gay uncle. You know, if you've got a husband and wife and and one of them has a brother that's gay, that's Gay Uncle Day. So they call it a Gunkle Day. So it's in the process. I mean, relax. We're still dealing with goddamn Black Lives Matter, and we're still dealing with. All the, you know, stuff being burnt down and stuff. You'll get there. Believe me, you get there. We're dealing with stuff that's been happening oh, for the last two to three hundred years. We'll get to your gay stuff here in a minute. I'm not to be mean or anything, but please relax. I understand. You got laws passed. You feel like you're ready to go. You're ready to shoot out the barrel. Oh, God, here we go. Shoot out the barrel and, and you want everything now. We're, we're still baby steps. We're still dealing with... <laughs> with you know, slavery and stuff that happened, I don't know, uh, what was it, 1926? Uh, when was uh, June, June 10th day? Uh, 19, I forget, 1926, 1913? I could be wrong on those dates, but it was it was before the Depression and stuff. So we're still trying to fix that. <laughs> Settle for Gay Uncle Day for now, I guess. I don't know. I'm throwing it out there. You guys can swallow it how you ever want to do it. Oh, that's bad, too. Uh, speaking of swallowing, guess what? You know what? It, it doesn't matter. All we're going to do right now, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. And when we come back, uh, we'll get into that here in just one sec because uh, the world's going to end. And then I'll give you a couple things to look forward to here shortly. Um, breakfast is going to change. Thanks to my wife as of uh, today. Stick around. You'll listen to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. I'll be right back. There's nothing like a great cup of coffee. In Nautical Star Coffee, carry delicious coffee in their online store that tastes amazing, and it's made fresh to order. Located in North Carolina, Nautical Star Coffee wants to be your go-to online coffee store. Like you, they were tired of the same old mediocre coffee that cost a fortune but had little flavor to show for it. At Nautical Star Coffee, there's no minimum purchase required. Sometimes you just want one bag of coffee, and that's fine with them. Their coffee is roasted, bagged, and shipped at the time of your order to ensure freshness. They search for the best coffee blends from Honduras, Colombia, and Costa Rica to give you the greatest cup of coffee. They're also veteran-owned and operated and truly value your coffee needs. If you want the coffee labeled with your own logo, let them know. They can do that for you. Perfect for restaurants that want to have their own coffee brand and great for your local company or small business, too. Start shopping right now at nauticalstarcoffee.com. That's nauticalstarcoffee.com. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You just heard the new song from Serenity Pure, a female rapper from Brooklyn, New York. Her tales and music tries to inspire people and bring out a different flow to your ears. As a little girl, she always been writing music. She also told people, (laughs) of course, there's a rooster in the background. Yes. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You just heard Serenity Pure and her new song. I got to write that on here. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Uh, you just heard the latest one from Serenity Pure. She's a female rapper from Brooklyn. Her new song called Not A Cute Look. And you can find her music that inspires people and brings a different flow to your ear. As a little girl, she's always been writing music. Her music is different and very unique, and she deals with various things and issues while writing her all of her very own music. You can find Serenity Pure on all streaming platforms, SoundCloud, Spotify, and also you can find her also on ProfitRadio.com. That's Serenity Pure. And do me a favor, in, in no relation to, to the song, do me a favor, all you Facebook people out there playing this this game, this whatever it's called, Thug Life, don't, don't play this. Don't play this. Don't send me any more requests. I don't know how to block it. And if you don't know what Thug Life is... I see it on my instant messenger. It's it's you want to know how they're getting a hold of us, how they're tracking us. When you play these stupid games and you send me all these friend requests and stuff, I don't want to I don't want it is. So I'm like I don't want to click delete delete no no new more new notifications from this this app. This app and I get it all the time someone else sneaks in. So I said, "You know what? Let's let's find out who's playing it and what's playing it." And what it is. And so I looked it up how to play Thug Life on the Facebook. It's a Facebook game. And I came across this video. And I think the video itself will explain exactly who's playing and what's playing this game. Here we go. So we got 500,000. That is somehow big. Okay, so uh, let us go to the territory and let us upgrade since we don't have enough money 
Oh my goodness. They took a revenge. Okay, so I, I thought he is not that active anymore, but still one of our you know one of the players that that um help us uh i mean once one of the players that we attacked a while ago was still active so be sure that the player that you'll be attacking is not active anymore for example i think this guy right here aaron lloyd is no longer active so we'll be attacking him so what's the other good point of attacking non-active players is that um, they're you're kind of sure that there is no shield. stop stop no i'm done no i don't want to you can tell i can't even follow this guy i can't even follow this guy he's explaining the game to me and i don't want to play it. what happened to the the old game of um I don't know checkers. <laughs> Nobody plays checkers anymore. Nobody plays Scrabble anymore on the on your Facebook or your trivia. What's the trivia thing they play anymore before they went bankrupt? Um, nobody does anymore. I got to play these stupid games called Thug Life, and and they're sending me. Oh, you've been invited, and guess what? If you join now, you get fifty thousand tokens. Why? I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just. Oh, I know. I know. And last but not least, so I make breakfast for my wife. Uh, I try to every day now that she's been home and she our, our morning schedule is a little bit different now that she's been home working from home and stuff. So I do all the, the horse stuff and the feeding stuff and the chicken stuff and the farm stuff. And then I lay back down and then she gets up and then uh, makes her breakfast and stuff. And she lets me, you know, lay in bed for another hour or so after I've done that. So before it was, we'd both get up at the same time. I, you know, I'd make her breakfast while she gets ready and, and then she does all her stuff. And then she, I send her out the door with breakfast and then I start my chores. So our time schedule, um, because it's an hour drive for her to get into Charlotte. So we gain an hour, hour and a half in the morning where I'm not making her breakfast as much as I used to. I make it on the weekends, but not as much anymore. So today she had some stuff to do. I had to go see a client today, uh, talk about some some stuff here on the show, and uh, I said, you know what, we'll meet back here at 10 o'clock, and then we'll start our day, so she had to go get notary stuff, I had to meet the client, and I was like, I came back from the client, and I'm like going, you know, I have my morning smoothie and stuff, and we have fresh blackberries, we have fresh um, tomatoes, we have fresh uh, vegetables on the garden, so I make a smoothie with tomato juice, I know it sounds gross, but it's great, blackberries, tomato juice, apples, and and bananas and i like it i love it and i'll have a big one of those big 16 ounce to 32 ounce uh smoothie but man i had that at like seven o'clock in the morning and when she came back at, at 10 o'clock and we sat there in the kitchen i'm like going i'm starving well at the time she came in and she had a bag she's like i'm sorry i'm sorry i had to stop and get something to eat on the way back you know what she got she told me a <laughs> she told me a mm, hold on She told me that Quick Trip, now, if you're not familiar with Quick Trip, it's called QT here in the Carolinas. Uh, it's kind of like the 7-Eleven um, for the Carolinas and, and outreaching uh, of that. So, but they've got an actual place where they can, it's a little bit better than 7-Eleven, to be honest with you. <laughs> but Quick Trip offers like, pizzas like slices of pizza i know it sounds like 7-eleven but it's a little bit better believe me it's a little bit better those here in the carolinas know those of us in tennessee georgia and all that stuff we know it's kind of like in florida the wawa so oh i love wawa qt quick trip is the same thing so they she said to me the other day oh they've got a breakfast pizza i said a breakfast pizza what the hell is that oh i'm like thinking like tater tots cheese and maybe an egg on a slice of pizza, she's like, "No, it's it's good, it's good." I'm like, "How good is it?" Well, no, it's got it's got all the stuff that you like, all together, <laughs> mixed into one. I'm like, "Hey, you know what? I'm not I'm not gonna like it." But they make a breakfast pizza at Quick Trip, and it has as the sauce sausage gravy, cheese, bacon, and sausage. And here's a review from a guy. Who had that thing, and he could probably express it a little bit more than I can. 
This is the breakfast pizza from Quick Trip. But I decided I needed to go get something to eat. And I was thinking I would go and do my regular, um, I love Taco Bell breakfast. Don't get me wrong, I love it. Uh, and I, th I was thinking I was gonna do that, but then I thought, no, there's something else I wanna try. And that would be the breakfast pizza from Quick Trip. I've been seeing commercials about it, and I was excited because I am a lover of all things breakfast and a lover of all things pizza. And when you put these two things together, it's like a sweet marriage of wonderful deliciousness. And I would like to put this whole thing into my mouth and just fall asleep. But I Jesus. can't do that because I'm going to be driving here in a scant few moments. So I'm going to try the breakfast pizza and see what we're all about. Why is this box so difficult? All right. Now, one thing that kind of to that, and that's Casey's um, uh, gas station, convenience store, whatever it's called. I'm it skipping a little bit so you can hear her. But me and my wife would go to Casey's all the time and get their breakfast. It's a mess of a thing that is. All right, get back so to So I'm going to try to compare this to that because that one I know so very well, and this one's kind of new for me. Actually, it is very new for me. I've never had it before. Um, just from touching it, and I'm going to hold it up for you guys a little bit better so you can see. Just by touching it, I feel like the crust, the crust is, I mean, it's, it's horribly greasy. I don't know if you can see the grease on my fingers or you can tell. Um, but. The crust is has got a little more texture to it. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of more more bready and rough underneath. It's not like a smooth crust. Not that all crusts are rough or smooth or whatever, um, but it looks looks very hearty. Apparently, on there, as you probably saw when I put it up to you or saw the picture, we got sausage, cheese, egg. Um, looks like some bacon. Um, might be some ham in there, but you can't tell because it might be hidden under the cheese. And they got the gravy. I love sausage gravy. I could pour that on anything breakfast related or even non-breakfast related. I would pour it on there because breakfast uh, sausage gravy to me is one of the most awesome things. And again, I don't get into sausage me. gravy. My wife yeah. does, but I, I I don't get into the sausage gravy. So I'm going to go ahead and take a bite, a uh, fairly big bite to try to get as many of the flavors in there as I can. So you might have to hold on while I start to chew. Uh. <laughs> Takes a big bite. Breathing, smelling getting it in digesting lip smacking got a little not bad it's not <laughs> tremendous in flavor i mean you taste the sausage you taste a little bit of the cheese he's got the shit on the nice, side of his face oh there it goes on the ground it's not like a gourmet thing or whatever you know i've had several different types of breakfast pizzas from the gas station variety to buffets uh, variety even uh frozen pizza uh, one company that we um, get quite a bit of, one of those fundraising companies, they have a breakfast pizza, and I try that. All of them are pretty much the same. Um, none of them really stand out with with their flavor. It's like it could add a little more, have a little more pepper to it. Like the sausage gravy could have a little more pepper. Uh, the eggs could be a little bit better. Um, more bacon. <laughs> Can you never go wrong with more bacon. All right, so this video is but from 2015, and whatever my wife brought home today, and I took a bite. I took two bites, and then she walked away. I go, "You are how many did you buy?" Well, they were two for five bucks. I'm like going, "Well, can I have one of them?" She's like going, "Yeah, I guess. Do you want it?" I'm like going, "Yeah, duh. That was awesome." Now I don't know if because I was starving. I don't know if it because I was just you know me needing some kind of just greasy breakfast food after eating my healthy healthy uh, smoothie that I made that morning so I had it I recommend it if you can if you can find it uh, quick trip QT uh, the gravy is the pizza sauce sausage gravy uh, cheese lots of bacon on ours uh, crumbled up uh, eggs and it was good so if you're not starving by now well guess what you're probably starving uh, by now. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for hanging out with us, sharing us, sending us all your stories that we enjoy here on Proper Radio, or sending us all your stories that we enjoy here on Deacon Live, and you can too be part of the show. All you have to do is go down to the Be Heard section on Profit Radio, click on Be Heard, and uh, opens up a microphone on your desktop, laptop, tablet, whatever you listen to us, 
at and you can leave a voice message come straight here to the station uh, send us all your stories at deacon at properradio.com on behalf of all you guys listening to us and putting up with us for the last hour I'd like to thank you guys my name is the deacon saying good night and good night wait 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 come back this is the end the absolute end écoute moi See ya. Bye.